So a long time ago now, the you know the Murdoch family comes on the scene and changes broadcast and cable and everything we know about television. I mean, here in the U.S., they were bold enough to launch their own broadcast network when there were only three major broadcasters. And, of course, they changed a lot about how television was consumed here. We all know some of the impact they've had on the news business and the sports business. As you're covering this industry, is there anybody out there, any any investment group, any entrepreneur that has any of that sort of let's change the world kind of mindset that you're following or that maybe there's some chatter in the industry, that there's some name or some group that's really trying to fundamentally change the game of how we consume media, whether it's news, sports, regular broadcast, local television. Uh, wh- where, where are the visionaries in this media space today? Hmm. That is a really, that's a really great question. It's a tough question. Um, off the, the, I would say... The biggest shifts that I feel like I'm seeing right now are mainly coming from the tech companies and trying to own a piece of the media, you know, companies like Google, uh, companies like Meta, um, Amazon, right, pushing uh, Apple, pushing into the space and trying to change the dynamic of what it means to be a media company and what the media industry looks like. I don't doesn't mean there's not one out there, but there's not immediately a, a person, an individual who kind of like like a, someone from a startup or something like that who kind of comes to mind to me right now as sort of like being revolutionary or or changing the industry. And and that's what it feels like. And again, as an outside observer, not watching the in- intricacies of each business every day, it feels like the all all of the media industry sort of lacks that leader, that person who's pushing the envelope, and maybe what they do doesn't work, but it forces everybody to at least respond to it. It it feels like maybe Elon Musk was trying to do some of that with his Twitter acquisition, change yeah. the game on social, turn it into an all-encompassing thing. But, but even that, it felt like it was more disruptive than it was visionary. And uh, I think any industry that lacks that driving factor often starts to stagnate a bit. And it certainly feels like the leaders of these companies are trying to figure out their place in this landscape as opposed to make a new space. Uh, but as I said, you cover the industry every day and you you talk to these folks, you might have a different perspective on that. Or, or you tell me if I'm wrong, maybe there are leaders who, while they're trying to maintain their space, they actually really are trying to find what the next generation looks like. I think everybody is trying to find what the next generation looks like. I mean, if you look at sports, we've got companies like Overtime that, you know, it's a younger company. It's focused on high school sports and, 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 or um, trying to, to get a Gen Z sports audience, right? That's, that's really their core focus. So there's definitely kind of smaller companies here and there that are pushing the envelope on in terms of what media looks like. But I guess if I think of, okay, what's the last big company that everybody in media like had to chase? For me, it's really still Netflix and, and Reed Hastings and I, we're, the media industry is still chasing them and, and reacting to that, right? I don't, I'm not sure that there's... Um, Anyone in the last, if I think about like the last five, 10 years, that's had quite the same impact on media that Netflix has had. And I'm curious from your view, why do you think certain uh, traditional winners in, let's say, the cable business struggled so much to get into the streaming space? I think about here in the U.S., CNN for so long was just the name in news, whether you liked them or not. Uh, they just were. They tried their CNN Plus service, and it was gone in a matter of months. You know, ESPN, they launch ESPN Plus. It's fine. It's surviving. But it certainly didn't thrive the way the early days of that did. Is there anything about the traditional model that's just hard to replicate on a streaming 24-hour service and an on-demand service? I don't think that the big cable news companies, or any cable news company really, has figured out how this next generation wants to consume news. I think we've got a lot of um, younger people who go to TikTok, for instance, right? They, they go to newsletters, they go to individual personalities. And I don't think the cable news network model translates well to that environment. Um, I think everybody's trying to figure it out right now. Um, how do we bring that over? 
But I think that's the problem is that we just took what is a standard linear feed of news and, um, you know, hour long programming or whatever it is. And we just brought it over to streaming and we didn't rethink the way that people actually wanted to consume this content. And so I think that was really the big problem for news. For sports, it's been a little bit more challenging because there's, and maybe there's some of this with news too, but I think these companies were just so nervous about losing the uh, the cable networks that had sustained them for so long, right? I mean, ESPN gets way more money from the cable bundle than any other channel, right? And that's because its viewership has just always been massive. And they've got these hugely expensive rights fees that they have to pay for so that they can um, hold on to their live sports and keep their audiences. And so for the longest time, sports stayed on television and people continued being willing to pay for it. And they just didn't want to give that up. I think they were just afraid of cannibalizing themselves and they didn't go all in and now they're being forced to. What are the questions that you're asking? What are some of those ideas that, that you have that you haven't quite been able to get a story out about um, that are on your mind, whether over the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months? Um, what do you want to know uh, from what's happening in our in our mass media markets? Yeah, I mean, in 2024, I'm really interested to see this how this dynamic is going to play out both in streaming and in sports betting, where we've got one or two people at the top, one or two companies, I should say, at the top that have a lot more money and are in a much stronger um, sort of cash position than everybody else that's following them. So in sports betting, it's DraftKings and FanDuel. In um, streaming, I would say it's Netflix. Right. So I'm very curious to see how the market dynamics are going to work when you've just got somebody who's in a much strong position, stronger position than everybody else. How do you catch up? How do you sort of break up um, the or challenge the leaders who are at the top when they've got such a such a large lead? And then as you think about the the big risks out there to mass media companies. We talked a little bit about things like TikTok. How are they going to be able to deal with these short form social channels? Are there any other threats or any other you know, marketplace dynamics that you think um, executives are really having to try to navigate just to keep their companies at the levels of profitability that they have had? Yeah, that that that's um, certainly a time for attention is, is huge right now. And it's not just social platforms. Like I mean, TikTok is TikTok and YouTube have sort of taken over. Um, if you look at like recent studies of, of teens, TikTok and YouTube have really taken um, attention, but it's also things like gaming, right? We're starting to see um, some of the media companies talk more about their gaming businesses and try to build that out because they're realizing that that's where people are spending more time. Um, so how these companies, which have been really historically slow to adapt to new technology and innovate, um, if they can they be faster, right? Can they start to move more quickly? I think will will be one. And then if you were giving counsel to, you know, those the next generation of leaders out there who are thinking about their companies and thinking about how they should be doing their marketing and how they should be showing up on these platforms, any uh, words of advice or counsel from what you've seen in this space about where where they should be focusing their attention as they're thinking about spending their own ad dollars and participating on certain mass media platforms. To hear the answer to that question, simply click the link in the description of this video to access the full episode. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for videos like this and subscribe to this show anywhere you get your podcasts.